And so how we build some safety into getting GARP growth at a reasonable price versus a value trap. If you've been confused with market activity and earnings, you're probably not alone. It's definitely been a crazy earnings week and we have more to come next week. We've seen those big tech high flyers starting to come back down to life while those beaten up stocks left for dead are now rising back up. We're obviously breaking down on some key technical levels on the S&P 500. Breaking below 4200 and 4150 was key levels for me personally, and it's a mental stop loss for a lot of people out there. Are we gonna start seeing a three handle in front of the S&P 500? Could be right around the corner. But let's ignore the noise and let's get back down to value investing here. And so when we think about the October lows, it's been a tale of two stories. We basically have 10 to 15 names pushing the S&P 500 up while the other 485 names are either in a bear market or hitting 52 week lows. And so while we've had this really nice rally off of October lows, if we dig behind the story that's being told to us, it's really not that impressive when we take out the 10 or 15 names. And historically, the S&P 500 is now trading at what we would consider a low valuation. But within that low valuation, there is a tremendous amount of companies trading at 52-week lows, multi-year lows, and are in bear territory, be deep value GARP type plays. And so when we think about GARP, this is growth at a reasonable price. First thing that comes to mind from Peter Lynch is going to be the peg ratio. It's gonna be price to earnings and growth. And when we understand a peg ratio of one or lower, that tends to be in that sweet spot of growth at a reasonable price. And so when we look at historical returns on really focusing on growth at a reasonable price versus the overall market here, and this is where I think we're at an inflection point, and this is why I really wanna highlight this point, is I think overall index performance is probably going to be slightly down to sideways going forward as we're going to see those 485 stocks maybe start getting some price discovery because the prices are extremely depressed and the growth rates are probably better than we're pricing in and those other 10 to 15 names that have been carrying the market could absolutely get multiple compression and underperform the other 485 and so it's our job as individual stock pickers which i don't recommend guys i recommend you buy just a well diversified index but for people looking for growth at a reasonable price i think this is a great opportunity to start digging under the hood and start finding these stocks because as we see here if we can find growth at a reasonable price you can absolutely outperform the market substantially. And what better time to find growth at a reasonable price when basically the majority of the market is trading at 52 week lows in bear market and at trading multi-year lows. And so that's why I really want to hone in on this topic today. And so if you've been a loyal subscriber and you've donated to the channel and you have access to a calculator here, I want you guys to throw in the peg ratio as your first line of defense before you start plugging in any sort of numbers here because i really think this is the opportunity to get really picky on what you're buying be really patient on what you're buying because i tend to think that market volatility is going to come here you guys know i believe we are going to head in some sort of defined recession by the first half of next year and so let's talk about the problems we're going to run into while trying to look for companies that trade for peg ratios around that one to below would be ideal and the biggest thing you're going to run into is that most of the scanners that you're going to come across are going to put forth the bank stocks and reason being is banks have sold off tremendously they trade for low valuations and their growth rates are projected out to be probably between that five to 10% mark, and they're probably trading between that five to 10 PE ratio. So that gives them a peg ratio of one. But what don't we like about the banks? The banks have too much exposure to paper losses and too much exposure to consumer behavior, whether that's credit card losses, car loans. And we can see here, car loan defaults are now starting to pick up. So this is a key point to kind of keep an eye on. While I do think some banks are presenting some interesting opportunities, it probably wouldn't be where I would go. You want to go to places that have the ability to expand or outperform their growth rates even though their peg ratio is sitting around one and that they can expand their margins as well or just to kind of run you through what my thought process is in here i'm looking at large caps which is going to be 10 billion to 200 billion market cap in the technology sector and then when i go to fundamentals this is where it starts getting a little bit more important i'm going to put price to free cash flow of under 20 because ideally I like price to free cash flow to be right around 10, but if this is a young company that's growing really fast, I can understand getting behind paying a little bit more if the growth rates are actually gonna be extended out much longer. And for a peg ratio, we're gonna put under one and just see what kind of comes up here. Now, I did not plan this out whatsoever, 
But one of the stocks that actually comes up is a stock we've talked about on the channel. And there's only three names that are actually popping up that fit the four descriptions that we basically put in here. And we can see here that Gen Digital is number one is one of the names that are up here. And that's one that I've actually been keeping an eye on and talking about saying it's getting pretty interesting around that 14 to $15 mark. We've done an analysis on this one. You see Skywork Solution. We also see Enphase on here, which recently had a pretty substantial sell-off. Now, most likely what the problem you're gonna see once again with these three names is that earnings are actually coming down while price action is coming down. And that's really not a great scenario here. What you wanna see is consistent earnings growth while price is coming down but one stock i do want to highlight here that is getting into the wheelhouse of kind of just hitting on all cylinders here is definitely going to be google we see google now trading at a 1.38 peg ratio industry standards at 1.5 so it is trading at somewhat of a discount here when we look at a price to earnings growth multiple and so when we dive into google here we can see forward PE sitting right around 19, 20 times earnings. And so we wanna see that growth rate above 20. And so when we look at Yahoo Finance, we can see that Google's growth rates are sitting right around that 17, 18%. And when I build my analysis, I definitely put some safety in there. And so when we look at what I got for a fair market value for Google, I get between that 95 to 105 kind of price target here. And so the story now unfolds that if I'm buying that stock around that price, that the growth rates are gonna make sense to take on the take on the risk at that point in time. And anything below $95 a share, I'm probably getting a peg ratio below one, which now builds even more growth opportunities in the future, running my analysis this way. And so when we look at a clear picture here of Google, just looking at revenue and earnings, what are we seeing? Well, we're seeing that they are heading in the right direction. They're going in an upward direction. It's not up and down. It's not coming down. It's going in an upward direction here. And that is where we find GARP. If this was a value trap, this is where this is where we kind of have to draw the line. And this is where really the art of investing comes into where some people are downgrading stocks and some people are upgrading stocks because maybe the because maybe the path of earnings growth and revenue growth is not clear to everybody. And maybe the valuation got cheap because the company did something wrong or earnings are coming down. And so when we take the visualization of Google and then we put it on paper, we can see here that Google's top line revenue is growing at a very, very nice pace. EPS is growing at a very, very nice pace and following that revenue growth. And so the story that's coming together is that this is growth at a reasonable price if you're able to buy it at the right price. At our scanner, what did we notice? There was a couple other names popping up there, Gen Digital being one, and this one's definitely going to be a little bit more controversial, not as clear of a picture. And revenue and earnings is kind of just all over the place here. We can see that EPS is all over the place. Revenue is kind of flat. Yes, it's getting a little bit of a tick up here. Now they have made some acquisitions and my philosophy and why I'm willing to take the risk on a company like this at the right price is because I do believe there is growth at a reasonable price with this company because they focus really on cybersecurity for the consumer on electronic devices. And I tend to think that this is going to be a very, very solid business model going forward with how reliant we are on our technology devices and that there will be another tech boom and device boom coming in the not so distant future. And a company like this, I think, has a total addressable market that is expanding. And so this to me becomes interesting, but it's not the clear picture like Google has, where it has that consistent top line revenue, consistent EPS growth. This has kind of been all over the place and the price action has been all over the place. And what ends up happening is that price action converges with the growth rate to make it an appealing risk versus reward, but not that clear steady growth that we're looking for. So another name that came up was Skywork Solutions. And take a look once again, the story is very, very unclear, but of course there could be a tremendous opportunity here if growth rates are expanding and earnings are expanding, right? So it all comes down to the story that's being told. And I wanted to kind of just break this down because I do think without, when we look down to an individual stock performance here, because of how many stocks are trading in bear markets, how many stocks are trading at 52 week lows and stocks that still have possibilities to have great, great earnings growth, regardless of what the economy is doing. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I'm going to be dropping some videos today on some updated price analysis. So make sure you like, and subscribe if you like this kind of material, and we will see you in the next one.